Um, I'm going to highlight some ways LTR research is helping us better understand links between plankton, forage fish, and ongoing climate change on the Northeast US shelf. In site news, uh, we faced a ton of challenges, but I'm really happy to report that we were able to carry out our main cross-shelf transect cruises throughout the entire pandemic. In uh, 2020, we did face a lot of challenges with gaps in facilities maintenance and partner cruises, but we are totally back on track in 2021. We uh, now have a new uh, JEDI subcommittee established, and they are uh, working actively to ensure our written code of conduct and our JEDI action plan align with our objectives and best practices. And we have uh, continuity in our leadership group and a growing team. The NES is a, a complex, very dynamic environment. It's influenced by a range of local to basin scale processes, including uh, things that change vertical stratification and the advection of waters from different sources, including cold, fresh waters from high latitudes and much warmer, saltier waters from the slope sea. In our uh, study of, NES, of the NES ecosystem, we're bringing particular attention to forage fish because these small fish are a critical link between the planktonic base of the food web and higher trophic levels, which um, in this region include threatened and iconic marine mammals and seabirds, as well as a, a very long history of high value commercial fisheries. Next. Six uh, dominant species of forage fish are important here. Uh, we are fortunate to have extremely valuable long time series from our partners at NOAA's National Marine Fisheries Service that have documented high spatial and temporal variability, species specific variability in these fishes. Uh, but many questions are open about what, what drives these dramatic abundance changes. Uh, in Joel Yopes's group, in collaboration with our NOAA colleagues, have begun to tease apart the factors that affect multi-decade fluctuations like you see here for sandlands. Um, first of all, interannual changes in the availability of their lipid-rich zooplankton prey are linked to population changes with a two to three year lag. Um, changes in source waters into the Gulf of Maine play a role. Uh, slope warm, these warm slope waters uh, have a negative impact on the survival of sand lance in a given year. And there's also evidence for top-down control by another forage fish, uh, turns out Atlantic herring, uh, feed on the juvenile sand lance. For his PhD research in the Yopi's lab, Justin Suka led some work to bring all of this together in habitat models for these forage fish. In the models, Justin incorporated new studies of the basic biology of the fish, environmental covariates, and the long records of catch data from NOAA surveys. Here you see the example of the trade-off in habitat suitability for sand lance and Atlantic, and Atlantic herring on decadal timescales. Justin took this work a critical step further and he ran habitat simulations under a range of climate change scenarios. As you see here, uh, very notably in all cases, he found that the current trajectory of decline in sand lance is predicted to worsen um, quite dramatically. And of some even deeper concern that his predictions show that both sand lance and Atlantic herring will decline under ongoing climate change in this region. As, as I showed a, a minute ago, historically, these two species have shown a kind of compensatory dynamic where there were high abundances of one or the other available to support upper trophic levels. And Justin's work is suggesting that things look, may look very different going forward. Next. Uh, to build on this work, we plan to continue studies to better understand forage fish diets and how those are connected to changes further down the food web. Extending our long-term observations will allow us to evaluate these new forage fish abundance predictions and as needed, refine our models and include extending um, implication to implications for higher trophic levels and providing science-based input for ecosystem-based management where the goal is to sustain 
uh, managed populations of birds, mammals, and commercial fisheries that depend on forage fish. Thank you.